Ready. Hey guys, Turret Mob here, and today I have Axel Fire Flurry here with me. Hi, everybody. And I'm waiting for him to do his introduction. <laughs> and I'm Axel Fire Flurry here, and I'm here with the amazing, wonderfully beautiful, talented, super intelligent, fun to chat with, bestest friend in the world, Jenna slash Turret Mob. Oh, stop it, yes. The part of my face is very great. I told you every time. Oh, why though? I have my plot. Oh God. <laughs> Anyways, today we're gonna be looking at the competitive side to the leaks from Cora Cora on Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Now, today we will be reviewing over just one basic set, just one, because if I if I did like a bunch, I would kill all of you with knowledge. And then, as well as looking at the fact that you can catch all the non-legendaries in the overworld, which is crazy. And I'll get to why that can be competitive as well, too. But, looking here on Showdown, I actually have, you know, Pidgeot and Beedrill pulled up with their respective abilities that they earn, which is no guard on Pidgeot and adaptability on Beedrill. So, for those of you who don't know which, uh, which, what each ability does, no guard guarantees that you will land all your hits, but for the trade-off, every hit can hit you from the opponent. So, so, that can be helpful and not so helpful in certain scenarios. Next, you have adaptability on Beedrill, and this just basically means that you power up all your stab moves. So... I mean, it's it, it's actually really awesome, and you've already seen this on Mega Lucario, and it works it fairly well. So, looking at Pidgeot, since it has no guard, and the only move, well, I wouldn't say the only move, but the, the most outstanding move that would be benef the beneficial from no guard is Hurricane. It's Stab, it has 70 accuracy, and it's got crazy, crazy base power at power 110. So, using Hurricane, you get Stab, it's incredibly powerful, and you could actually pick up a lot of KOs on things. And I put Heat Wave on here as well because it's, it's a spread damage move that also has a chance of missing. And it's a, just a good coverage move. Now... If you didn't like Hurricane for whatever reason, like you just you didn't think that the 30 chance to confuse and then afterwards the 50% chance to hit itself was good enough for you because you're needy, then you could also replace it for Air Slash, which while having lower base power damage actually has a 30% chance to flinch. So, oh, did, did, did you want to say something? I was just going to say, oh, the flinch. Oh, the flinch. I've seen the flinch hack so horribly wrong. It's it's evil. Especially on Togekiss. That evil, evil bastard. But, as well as this, I also thought that since you're actually incredibly fast already, with breaking the 101 base speed and all Megas getting 100 extra base stats put into it, I was thinking that if they just gave, like, an extra 20 to its speed, that you could actually become a very decent Tailwind user. And Tailwind is a great move to use, not only in doubles, but also in singles. But that does limit yourself in singles more, since it only works for four turns. And you have a lot of scenarios where you're just going to be switching. So I feel like it works better in doubles, but it can work in, in singles as well. Although... Sticky Webs is probably a better solution than Tailwind for singles. Doesn't get it, though, but it's just worth mentioning. I'm not much of a singles player, so you're going to have to forgive me if I'm screwing up your format. But finally, I put U-Turn on here because in singles, like I said, you're doing a lot of switching, and if Pidgeon gets that extra 20 in its base speed, then I could see U-Turn actually being incredibly viable 
because you're going to be outspeeding a lot of things. So you can use U-turn, get chip damage, and then gain momentum through getting a good switch in, if you do get that good switch in. So finally, looking at its EV spread and its nature, I went with Timid and went full into the speed and special attack with the last four dumped into HP. And this is mainly because I'm really hoping that Pidgeot gets a boost in its special attack rather than its base attack. Because, I mean, I just really want it to. I should probably make another set for a physical set, but I will probably just do that in a separate video. And I just hit my elbow with the desk. Oh, that hurt. But... Yeah, the idea is just to be as fast as possible and as hard-hitting as possible because you want this thing to be an incredible sweeper. So, next we have Beedrill with adaptability to power up its stab moves, which is why I went with Poison Jab for that, uh, not only to, to have a powerful stab move, but as well as that 30% chance to uh, poison the target, which can actually shut down a lot of walls as long as they're not steel or poison. It, but, you know, it's just, just, that, that's, that's just there to point out. And I also went with x because, again, powerful stab move and gains you some nice coverage against things like psychics and grass types. U-turn is there again for momentum, if I can click on it properly. And I put protect on here because I couldn't think of another move to put on here. But if this thing gets, like, crazy, crazy boosts in its attack and speed stat as well, then I would see Fell Stinger being a viable move to run on it, especially in singles. So you come in when your opponent is at a good enough HP to where you can take it out with Fell Stinger, and then you can raise your attack by two stats. So imagine a Mega, and you just got its attack stat to plus two. That's evil. I don't care who it is, just that's evil. And then again, looking at its EV spread and nature, I went with Jolly, Max Speed, Max Attack, and just dumped the last four into HP. And this is only just the first look at it. I'm sure if I gave its entire move pool a proper analysis, because with Oras, we are most likely getting move tutor moves, so I feel like I'm putting other moves not into consideration enough, but I will do a proper analysis later on on my own channel. So, what do you think, Kyle? I'm really enjoying your moveset, and I'm actually looking at one or two of the other moves on Mega Beedrill at the moment. And I don't know why, but Assurance just sounds like a really fun move to run on Mega Beedrill. Not sure why, but it's, it it makes me happy. I wasn't. I don't think it does get assurance, does it? It does. Huh? Cause I'm staring at it right now. Well, the thing with this is, is that it usually works better with slower Pokemon. So, like, let's let's say that I feel like Tyranitar gets assurance for some reason. I'm not sure if it does. Actually, I'm pretty sure it does because I feel like, uh, what was it, one of the guys in U.S. Nationals actually used a Tyranitar with Assurance on it. Nope, never mind. You just cut that out. But it works better with slow Pokemon, like Tyranitar, which is in base 60, so you're always going to be hit, you know, by something because you're slower, so you don't get, you don't hit anything first. You're always going to be taking damage. If that makes any sense. Oh no, it makes sense. I'm just looking at uh, Beedrill's base speed right now and mixing in with your nature and Eevee spread. Seeing if assurance really would be worth having. Well, it's at base 90 right now. On oh, not base 90, base 75. Whoops. I feel like it actually could go up to base 100 upon negative evolving. I'm going to make that a prediction right now. 
because I feel like they don't want to make it too broken, but they do want to give it some more usage. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Mega Pidgeot and Mega Beedrill are sort of like the Mega Ampharos, and what's the other? Mega Bayonet. I think of, yeah, that they're they could be useful, but just don't expect them to be all over the place. This is true. Yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say, and I'm really loving the uh, Pidgeot spread. I'm looking at Pidgeot's moves right now, and I really think you have it down. I mean, no, I don't think that'd be a worthwhile move. That'd be a waste of a slot. Yeah, it's, that's what, I mean, it's okay. We're both still learning, so no judgment. Yeah, because... Yeah, because I'm looking at Roost and Substitute. If we go by Smoke on Singles, Substitute and Roost might actually be useful, but we'd have to see its base stats first. Yeah, definitely, and that's the strange thing, because you're way more advanced in double battles, and I'm slightly the more singles player, slightly going into doubles. I will help you with the transitions. I hope you will. But, anyways, we should uh, move along. But, uh, the last point for this video, since we are covering competitive stuff, is that since you can catch all the non-event legendaries in the overworld, and if Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire keep the same mechanics that are present in X and Y, then you could potentially have every legendary with five IVs. Because how the game mechanics work right now in Oras, I mean not Oras, in X and Y, is that every legendary you catch can have, well, is guaranteed to have at least three perfect five IVs. I mean, three perfect IVs. And I'm loving that. Yeah, I'm loving that too, but um, it's a really, really difficult process. And you, if you wanted it to be like absolutely perfect, you'd have to, one, get a synchronized user, have it fainted at the front of your party unless you have it like leveled up to the level of the legendary and it could take hits for you. And two, you'd have to save before you encounter the legendary, which, if this is going to be like random encounters, is going to be incredibly difficult. And you have to then soft reset. So I feel like some people might not take that dedication, and actually I kind of know that they aren't, and they're just going to have like action, re action replay or power saves or just Pokegen, like always. So, kind of sad, but... It's a thing, and you also have to think about, since they're introducing all of these legendaries back into the game, are they going to be allowed to be used in VGC, or is this just kind of there? I hope they're not I mean, allowed. I hope they aren't either, just mainly because I don't like playing against legendaries. I just don't. It just seems kind of cheap. But I've, if I remember correctly, they were legal to use in well, BGC while Heart Gold and Soul Silver were the titles to be used. And I'm pretty sure it was you could use Heart Gold and Soul Silver as well as Diamond Platinum and Pearl, if I remember correctly. But I'm just not very keen on the idea of using them for competitive use. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same boat. Well, what in particular is like your reason for not wanting to use them? Well, uh, my problem is is you kind of already know what legendaries people are going to bring in if they are VGC legal. Uh, just you know which broken ones are going to come in. I'm actually. Uh, Latios, Latios, those two are really broken, at least in singles. I don't know how well they are in doubles. 
I'm pretty sure Dialga and Palkia aren't that big of a problem. Kyogre and Groudon, those could... Those are already massive problems, and to give them those... Uh, for lack... Because I can't remember what it's called, I'm just going to call them Mega Evolutions. That's going to make them pretty broken. Mega Rayquaza, that's going to be a massive problem. Yeah, the primordial forms and their abilities were incredibly broken, in my opinion. Like, especially in doubles. I could see that just... Oh, just no. Just no. Because after that, like, if they become legal to use in VGC, it's just going to be a big game of who Mega Evolves first, and then so I can Mega Evolve and then take away your ability, and then just completely wreck shop with you. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have to wait till January, and hopefully by then I will have plenty of teams to experiment with in doubles so I can try to do VGC next year. Yeah. If Legendaries become legal, I'm skipping this year's season. I might do the same. We'll just sit back and eat popcorn. Oh, yeah, no. I am I mean, I would actually just be breeding throughout the downtime, but and maybe take on, like, a few challenges... But I just would not be playing against Legendaries. I'd just be like, no. Just no, get the shit out of here. I, I really think that's about it for this. Yeah, that's. there's not much to say about competitive. A lot of this was just the in-game aspects and, you know, kind of personal velocities and whatnot. Yeah, that's pretty much all we have. So, everyone, thank you for watching, and we will see you all the next time. Thank you. Also, Bye, yeah, but a, also oh, just yeah. um, since this is split up, we should actually say that if you are coming from my channel, or since this is going to be posted on your channel, so if you're watching this video, and then you should actually come over to my channel if you feel like to catch the other part of this. Yes, yeah, so I will be leaving a link in the description. Hooray! So, again, everybody, thank you for watching, and we will hope to see you all next time. Bye. Bye.